Adnan, now it is clear. See, gaining access to a particular villain is ok, but he wants to gain access to all the villain by negotiating trunk between his PC and the switch. Normally, in the switching world or when we do switch configuration, you never do trunking between PC and switch. So, how he will do that? He will actually negotiate trunking between PC and switch because he takes one weakness, one vulnerability of one that the default configuration of the switch and that default configuration is what switch port, switch port mode dynamic auto. What is the meaning of dynamic auto? I will negotiate trunking whenever somebody invites me for trunk. When I say dynamic auto means I am waiting for invitation. Okay. I am waiting for invitation. If somebody invites me and say, okay, let us become trunk, then I will become what? Trunk. This is the catch. Not possible. Simulation is not possible. Okay. Next is double tagging attack. Okay. VLAN hop attack or double tagging attack. In double tagging attack, the hacker who belongs to VLAN 10 access server which is in VLAN 20. VLAN 10 user take access of VLAN 20 server. See normally again it is not possible to like go and access a server of a default VLAN uh, of a different VLAN because see the user belongs to VLAN 10 and he is trying to take access of VLAN 20 that is not possible. But yes with the help of double tagging method it is possible. So, here he is taking the advantage of native VLAN there is a term called native VLAN. Have you heard about native VLAN? Adnan for better understanding of any attack first in the beginning session only I told you that you should have an understanding of trunking, you should have understanding of VLAN, you should have understanding of SVI switch virtual interface, you should know STP, you should know MSTP, ether channel, access list, NAT all these topics must be clear in your mind. Because see, if you do not understand the terminology of trunk, if you do not understand the terminology of VLAN, if you do not know what is the meaning of VLAN tag, what is the meaning of native VLAN, it becomes very difficult to understand the attack. Got it? So, first refer that. Yes, VLAN 1 is considered as native VLAN by default. Yes, that is right, Vinay. VLAN 1. Okay. So, Adnan, if you are looking into more, what you are looking into more? This is, I am I am showing you all the attacks that take place on the switch. We are doing layer 2 security. We are not doing switching. So, if I am telling you that there is no trunking between PC and switch, we do not do trunking, no? Adnan, we do not do trunking between switch, P, PC and a switch, no? Trunking terminology means what? B it, it has to be between two switches, between a switch and a router. And what is the, what is the reason behind this, man? Because trunk link actually allow multiple VLAN traffic over that link. That is why it is called trunk link. So, if a user forms a trunk link between switch and him, See, switch can't see na. How switch will come to know? Switch will think that uh, the there is a another switch between, uh, there is another switch in front of me. So what he will do? If he see a trunk link between two, he will immediately forward uh, forward all the updates, and that is attack man. The PC wants to get all the updates from the switch. 
with the help of this trunking and you have to stop this kind of attack what is this attack called switch spoof attack fooling the switch if i come to your house and say i am from bank so and so bank bank has asked me to you know collect kyc from your place so you give me one uh, xerox copy of your id photocopy of your id you give me 5000 cash also because the bank is asking me to collect 5000 cash as a kyc know your customer or give me one check of 5000 he is trying to fool you he is trying to pretend that he belongs to bank so same way when i am telling switch spoofing means he the pc is pretending to be a switch got it and he is spoofing this spoofing means what fooling that switch he is pretending that yes i am also a switch come on let's have trunking between you and me clear adnan now you are clear and that is an attack that is an attack so how you are going to mitigate this attack simple next time a person comes and i am from bank let come on let's go to bank only then or you will write a note bank people are not allowed in my house right or you don't entertain people who are telling come on we'll do kyc on phone i will send you a link then you have to give me an otp all those are make like you know fooling many people call me also sir your kyc is incomplete your bank account will be locked your money will get locked i i i got this call man and this guy was telling me let's do kyc online i will send you a link then you send me an otp so if i am telling you that the you, this hacker is trying to negotiate trunking why you are why this vulnerability is kept on the switch you have to shut down this vulnerability one vulnerability is the weakness of that switch man loophole if you are vulnerable then anybody can come and attack you na if you trust that guy and give all the details then you are gone this is how things happen na there are 10 people they'll call 100 people that they are doing kyc out of that 90 9 uh, people will say sorry we don't trust you one person will say okay come on let's do kyc so they want that only okay so you shut down that negotiation and to shut down that negotiation the simple solution is what just do switch port mode access when i do switch port mode access what will happen will it become trunk now because the opposite of trunk is what access opposite of access is what trunk so if i say this is access then how it will become trunk right and if it becomes access he cannot become trunk and if he cannot become trunk he is just a member of one particular vlan and he will not get the update clear adnan so now next is vlan hop attack okay in the vlan hop attack or you can say double tagging attack as somebody said vivek that vlan 1 is considered as native vlan by default but it is not like that you can change the native vlan also you can have only one native vlan either vlan 1 or suppose you say i want to make vlan 10 as native vlan it's okay either you say vlan 1 is native vlan or you say vlan 10 as native vlan clear so now every switch knows that if i receive a frame from native vlan i should send it untagged
So, Faiz is asking me sir, so we can mitigate this risk by creating VLAN on the switch or switch to switch trunk. See, I said to mitigate the switch spoof attack, switch off the dynamic auto feature from the port. On every switch port, suppose you buy a switch Cisco switch of 48 port, on every switch port the default configuration is switch port mode dynamic auto. So, if it is this, if this is the configuration on each and every port, then what will happen? Somebody might negotiate this. So, what you do? You switch off this configuration from this port and make it what? Access port. And forget all these things, just simple, you know. Suppose you are not at home and you are going out for a trip, are you going to switch, off, switch on all your lights at home and go? No, what you are going to do? If you are going out for a trip, you are going to switch off all the lights, na? because you are not there. Why you want to keep those lights on? So, if you are not using any of the ports on the switch, just shut down. See, you are administrator man. So, next time what happens? If you want to connect a PC, just go and say no sir, sure, that is all. Hacker, hacker is not authorized to do that. Hacker is not having any access to the switch. So, if he connects, what will happen? Ports are down. <laughs> so, if you are not using, like you know, if you are not using the chair, what you do? You fold and keep it. If you keep it open, what will happen? Somebody will come and sit. Yes or no? If you keep any chair open you know, and keep it down in the compound or somewhere in the garden, people will come and sit. So, clo close it, just shut down, shut down all those ports, finish. What will happen? You want to use it, on it. So, if you are going on trip, what you do? Shut down all the lights, switch off all these lights, fan, everything, AC. When you come back, you will on it, not a big problem. Clear? And nowadays, you know, you know, you know, there were cases, not nowadays, so there are cases that, you know, those who come to rob your house, they, they also eat your food. They will always open the refrigerator and eat your food also. So, do not keep food also at home. Otherwise, if there is a robbery in your house, they will eat your food also. Delish. Okay? Just joking. Okay, so <coughs> double tag attack. What is double tag attack? Native VLAN concept is you know you have to understand what is native VLAN. VLAN one is considered as native VLAN. So somebody you know everyone knows that VLAN one is native VLAN. So what he is going to do? He is going to spoof his packet. He is going to spoof his frame with VLAN one ID. Attacker sends a double tag packet on his local access LAN. When catalyst A switch is ready to forward that packet on the trunk, the first tag is stripped because it is what a native VLAN. So, if suppose if I am adding VLAN 1 tag on the frame in the beginning and I am adding another VLAN tag behind that, yes, management VLAN, VLAN 1. So, if I am using VLAN 1 or if I am using any native VLAN, I can use only one VLAN ID as a native VLAN. Remember that. You cannot have multiple native VLANs. You have only one native VLAN. So, suppose you are having a native VLAN concept. Okay. And so, the guy, what, he will do what? He will you know, attach one, first he will attach the native VLAN ID and second he will attach original ID. So, what happened? He actually want to reach, suppose see this guy belongs to VLAN 10 and he want to reach VLAN 20 server. Normally, he cannot do because somebody must have done some filtering. Okay, not VLAN 10 guys should not be allowed on VLAN 20, but this guy want to go. So, what he is going to do? 
he is going to make this native VLAN first, then he is going to hide the destination VLAN that where he wants to go, VLAN 20. When this frame is received by the switch on before sending it on the trunk link, he will remove that native VLAN ID. So, what comes out VLAN 20? So, it will be forwarded to VLAN 20. See this whole payload or this whole packet, this whole frame might be malicious, infected with virus, infected with worms, trojans, anything can be there in, in that frame. This once the frame receives uh, is received by the server or reach the server, it is get infected. So, this attacker actually want this frame or this payload or this packet should reach server anyhow. That is why you now when they when they ask for KV, KYC, they will send you a link and they will say click that link. When you click that link or they will send you know some people they will send some beautiful picture and they will say click this picture to zoom. When you click that picture to zoom it, your PC or your network get infected. First your PC will get infected, then automatically it will get the whole network infected. This is the drawback. So, same way in double tagging attack, the hacker is putting a tag in front of normal VLAN or the VLAN where he want to reach with native. So, why the attack take place? Because of the concept of native VLAN being sent untagged. So, simple you can mitigate this attack by sending tag. Now, you, you say I do not want this tag to be removed. I do not want native VLAN tag to be removed. Let it be. If my frame goes with same VLAN ID, VLAN 1, it is ok. Let it go. Or you can do is what? You can put a command. See, if I do not want the tag to be removed, I will say VLAN dot 1 q tag native. What is the meaning of this? I please I am requesting my switch please do not remove the tag send it like that only. I do not want native VLAN tag to be removed ok or what you can do you can block this native VLAN to be passed. So, how you are going to do that you say switch port trunk encapsulation switch port mode trunk switch port trunk native VLAN 800 and then ok. So, see now what is 800? The question arises what is 800? Everyone knows that VLAN 1 is considered as native VLAN. Okay? Everyone knows that VLAN 1, first he is not going to tag VLAN 20. He is going to put two tags. First he will keep VLAN 1 or VLAN 10, whichever is the native VLAN, he will put that tag first. And then he will hide the tag which is to be you know where the server belongs like 20. So, now what happens when the switch receives simple like see I will show you this is my switch this is my another switch and there is a server here who belongs to VLAN 20. Now, I want to bombard this server with viruses or I want to send trojan to this server or I want to send worms to this server. So, what I will do? I will make a packet or I will make a frame with that payload which will infect this server. But Suppose, I belongs to VLAN 10, simple huh? without any attack, I belong to what VLAN 10 and if there is a filtering on this switch that all the traffic of VLAN 20 only should access this server that is all, no one else should go. So, what will happen if this fellow comes with VLAN tag? Okay? VLAN 10, okay. it is not native VLAN, it is a normal VLAN. Then what will happen? This fellow will say, oh you belongs to VLAN 10, I will tag this 
actually tagging is done by the switcher not by the PC remember that tagging is not done by the PCs PCs don't understand VLAN PCs don't understand VLAN tagging remember that PCs don't understand VLAN they don't know what is the meaning of VLAN VLAN concept is only on the switch PCs don't understand how to tag also until unless they have some software application okay for doing that that is possible so so suppose switch receives a frame and he says oh the, you belong to VLAN 10 come on okay I will tag you and send it to this guy switch 2 now switch 2 will say okay you belong to VLAN 10 let me send you to VLAN 10 server so this frame goes here in a normal working suppose you belong to VLAN 20 then the switch will say oh you belong to VLAN 20 he will tag it 20 but now comes attack there is a server here who belongs to 20 and this attacker belongs to say he he is actually attacker huh? so what he is doing he find out that this switch carries a native vlan vlan 1 everybody knows that that vlan 1 is native vlan here also all the technical people who have studied cisco they know that vlan 1 is native VLAN. So, what he will do? He will send the traffic to switch 1 because he does not belong to any VLAN. So, switch 1 will say ok you are not from any VLAN that means you belong to VLAN 1. So, he will not send this VLAN 1 ID in his frame he will just send this frame to this switch and then this switch oh you do not belong to any VLAN so that means you belong to native VLAN and finally he will go to VLAN 1 only but no this guy actually wants to go to VLAN 20 so what he will do he will do some kind of manipulation and put a tag here on this PC and here he will hide VLAN 20 tag now when it comes to switch 1, switch 1 say oh you belong to VLAN 1 and that is native VLAN so I will not allow you to tag this and he will send what VLAN 20 frame. This switch receives VLAN 20 he say this belongs to VLAN 20 come on you can go there like that. So this is switch spoofing or double tagging attack. attack. Now, how you are going to mitigate this? Simple. You tell this switch that next time whenever you see VLAN 1, do not remove the tag. So, what will happen? This fellow sends the frame like that only and this fellow receives with VLAN 1. He will do what? He will send it to VLAN 1 server or VLAN 1 only he will not send it to 20 because the tag is still intact ok or what you can do you can tell this switch switch 1 huh, that whenever you receive a frame with a tag of 800 now how you got this number 800 so what you did you went and changed the native VLAN you see I change the native VLAN to 800 any number uh, you can do any unused VLAN number uh, unused. So, I took 800 see if I am doing this only I knows about this I am an administrator. So, what I will do I will change the number of native VLAN from 1 to 800. Now, this fellow find out ok that 800 is a native VLAN first of all he has to find out huh? because he thinks VLAN 1 is native VLAN. So, what he will do he will do again same problem same thing double tagging he will keep 800 first and then he will keep 20 secretly behind 800. Now, switch 1 receive a frame with 800. So, what you said 
allow every VLAN, but remove 800. So, he will not allow this frame to go because you said do not allow any frame coming with VLAN ID 800 because that is fake. Clear? So, this how you can mitigate double tagging attack. Clear? Clear guys? Fez, Adnan, Talha. Again, this cannot be emulated or this cannot be seen in the lab because of the problem that first you have to think like an act, uh, hacker. You have to make arrangement of doing that double tagging. That is not possible. I can't do that. I am not a hacker. You need to use some application that is going to manipulate that and make a double tag. Got it? Clear? So, switch spoof attack also we switch spoof attack we can see but only thing is we can see is what? We can just make trunk and that that is all. We cannot do anything else. And now comes what port security. Just one minute. Huh? Okay. Now somebody in between told me that port security. Now what is port security? Now port security means I do not want any unauthorized user okay, to get connected to my network, LAN network because many times what happen in, in your company there might be visitors coming in, technical, non-technical people. So, any unauthorized users coming in, I do not want him to get connected to my LAN network and enjoy the privileges. For that reason, I have done what port security. See, I remember earlier when we used to have the mobile phones were not there. So, we used to have landline. So, when we used to have landline, what happened? Now, like, you know, every relative, every neighbor used to come and say, Sir, can I give one call? Or can I take, you know, can I just call someone? So, you see there are 10 people coming in daily and asking for one call, free call. So, what is the charges I am going to get every month? Because every call is will be charged. Oh, sorry. So, I was telling you about port security. Port security means unauthorized users are trying to access or coming in your network and accessing. I do not want unauthorized users to get or gain access to your network because your network belongs to your employees, your authorized employees. I do not want. So, I was telling you an example that in those days when mobile phones were not there, we used to have a landline. So, in the landline phone, I remember there was one, one of my neighbor, he used to every day come and say, sir, I want to give one call to my relative every day. Now, this is not the only person, anyone else coming to my house again giving a call. So, there might be 10 people coming to my house, every 10 person is going to give a call to their relative. So, one day I thought of an idea, what I did, there was a function there, marriage function. So, I said, I will be having 50 or 100 relatives and everyone will give 5 calls, then the number of calls I am. So, what I did, I just locked the keypad of that telephone, so that everybody should understand that I do not want them to give a call. I locked that. Uh, we used to get that a uh, keypad locker. You can lock the keypad with the with a particular lock, physical lock. I am talking about a physical lock, small lock. You can put a keypad there and you can lock it. But then people are like you know shameless. They started asking me the key. 
come on give me the key i want to give a call so finally i have to give the key and then they giving a call so one of my neighbor is to come every day with his diary and he is to give a call in fact you won't believe he also gave international sorry std calls you know to his native place so like i was fed up like you know i can't say no to him because he was my good neighbor so i just went to mtnl the body from where i took the telephone connection the only authorized body to give the telephone connection and i asked them that this is the issue that my neighbor is coming every day and giving a call and sometime he is also calling as you know interstate calling so that is chargeable so he said no worries i will give you one code you just dial that code and set it up once you set up this code what will happen when he this guy comes in and give a call he will get busy tone or some some kind of this thing so another this guy is to every day come with the diary and when i applied this code what happened he was not able to give call to native place local calls he can give international call again separate lock so international call lock std call lock so now the calls were restricted only to local calls local call is okay you know it's less chargeable okay so being a neighbor i used to allow him the local call so see physical lock is not possible on the switch i cannot put a lock on the switch or on the ports so any unauthorized user can come and connect to my network if he comes with the cable earlier we used to have wired connection we were not having a uh, wireless connection so people can come with the wire people can come with their gadgets bring your own device and they can connect and become the member of your lan so if i want to stop them i need to do something on the switch i cannot put a physical lock on the switch and it is not possible to lock each and every port on the switch so that in that circumstances i am going to use what port security it is not one reason for doing port security i told you about mac flood attack or you can say uh um uh, mac uh so mac flood attack is one of the uh, att attack and there is one more name i forgot where you you know you want to choke the mac address table of your switch the reason for choking the mac address table of your switch because switch i am talking about cisco switch cisco switches earlier used to have a capacity of storing 14000 mac addresses i'm not talking about all the models i'm talking about few models were having a capacity of storing 14000 mac address not on each port ah total some might have 20000 some might have 50000 okay but this is the capacity so now what happened the hacker will try to use some tool in those days i remember there was a tool called d sniff macoff tool d sniff macoff tool this tool used to send 1 lakh mac addresses at a time how many mac addresses fake mac addresses 1 lakh so suppose a hacker come with an application on its laptop or a pc and send this fake mac address to the switch switch what will happen to the switch switch will immediately get his mac table full with the mac addresses fake mac addresses now you must be knowing it when you have done switching you should know that if the mac table of the switch is full he is going to do what he is going to do broadcast why because the switch always do unicast when he knows the mac address na if he knows the mac address he will always forward it but if you don't know the mac address what will he is going to do he is going to do broadcast okay yes we can bind the mac address statically but it is difficult man how can you bind 
each and every port with MAC address and many time you see you have an IP phone connection also. So, suppose this is my switch, I am having an IP phone and behind that IP phone I am having a PC. So, I need to bind two MAC addresses on each port. Suppose my company works in three shifts and in all the three shifts there are three laptops, everyone comes with their own laptop. So, how many MAC addresses? Every port will have three MAC addresses and you have to bind that manually. So, binding manually is okay man, you can do it, no problem, that is safeguarding, but it is not scalable. In long run, it is difficult. You cannot go on binding the MAC addresses to the port. Okay. So, for that reason, you so there are many attacks which can be mitigated with the help of port security. If you just consider CCNP switching, then people will give you a definition that only unauthorized users, if you want to stop unauthorized users, you do port security. But I say no, the definition is far more from that. There can be many such attacks which can be mitigated like one of the attack I told you is what? MAC flood attack. MAC flood attack. Somebody is flooding the MAC table of a switch with multiple fake MAC addresses. So, port security is one of the mitigation tool that normally you do to stop unauthorized access in your network. Okay. For doing that what you do? You configure an access port with port security. So, when you configure switch port mode access, you always give a command switch port port security and when you give this command switch port port security automatically MAC flood attack is mitigated. How? Because in MAC flood attack, you send more than one MAC address, one lakh MAC address, suppose, at a time. So, when you configure port security, you cannot send more than one MAC address at a time on a port. Later on also, because once you allow, once you configure port security on a particular port or a range of port, only and only one MAC address will be allowed by default. So, definitely the MAC flood attack is already stopped now, but now as I said previously that my company is having shifts. So, there might be someone coming in morning, someone coming in afternoon, someone coming for the night. So, I will be receiving multiple MAC addresses on a port authorized, but then when I set switch port port security, I restrict my port to only one MAC address. Yes, you have a choice, you can increase the MAC address on a particular port on a switch. So, I said ok, I do not want one MAC address restricted on each port, I want three. See, three is lesser than one lakh man. <laughs> I am telling you the capacity of my switch MAC table is of 14,000 MAC address, MAC addresses approximately. Okay, and somebody is sending one lakh MAC. Address. What will happen, man? Capacity will be 14,000 capacity full. Now there is no scope for adding any MAC addresses in the MAC table. So switch is going to do what? Misbehave. He is going to do broadcast continuously because he don't know the MAC address. He is going to act like a hub. Okay. So, yes, when I configure maximum 3 means I am telling my switch that if you receive one MAC address allow, if you receive the second one allow, if you receive the third one allow, if you receive the fourth one block, clear? Vine is asking me a question, can we configure port security on trunk port? Vine tell me when a user come, he will get connected to a trunk port or an access port, first of all. He is going to get connected. See, I am talking of, of an hacker who carries a PC. 
okay so he is coming with his own gadget he is coming with a pc so when he comes he will get connected to access port so if you configure this feature on trunk what will happen will the trunk work so always remember this feature is made for access layer yesterday also i told you the hierarchy access layer distribution layer core layer users are on access layer so a hacker can be on access layer that disgruntled employee and he is going to try to send this mac spoof attack or mac flood attack from the access port because he is just now i told you no you are an administrator you should turn all the ports which are not in used into access for safety or at least you shut down more safety so you can configure but this first try to understand this feature is used for what to stop attack to stop unauthorized access and this feature is only for access layer so as a administrator you are going to configure it on access port not on trunk ports but then you are asking me one question that if i if i mix if i mix cold coffee with if i mix a cold coffee with hot tea what is the outcome or if i mix a cold coffee with some juice what will be the outcome you can try at home <laughs> nobody will stop you do that trial let me know what was the taste okay i hope you understood okay we'll take a break of 5 10 minutes i'll be back okay a break guys so i hope you understood what is the meaning of this line what is the meaning of this line and this line okay why i said 3 because i want three devices authorized devices but then the problem is which three devices you want as a authorized device because the switch don't know na switch will say okay whichever device first uh, come first i am going to consider that those mac addresses like for example if i connect one uh, pc he will consider that as a authorized if i can uh, connect second one third one but there are chances that unauthorized pc also might get connected and he will consider that those mac addresses as the authorized so admin the first time the administrator have to do what he has to uh, feed with the correct mac addresses so somebody was telling in the chat that he, uh, can you statically bind those mac addresses yes you can statically bind those mac addresses but then i told you it is not scalable it is very difficult because suppose if you have to bind 10 mac addresses on each port so writing down mac addresses again a difficult task because it is a it is in hexadecimal 6 bytes 48 bits so it is difficult no so in that case what you can do you can use a word called mac address sticky when you use the word mac address sticky means what whenever you connect one authorized pc and he the switch detects that automatically he save that mac address in its database when you connect the second pc he will detect the second mac address and the third and finally he'll say okay i have learned all the three authorized mac addresses now and i'm going to keep it stick on that particular port but then you want this mac address to be permanent so if you really want this mac address to, to be permanent then what you have to do you have to save the configuration so once you save the configuration what will happen the mac address will remain permanent on that particular port now the question arises sometimes student ask me like in worst case suppose if i change my lan card or some something happens to my lan card or if i use usb lan card or something like that then what then you can change also that mac address 
as administrator you can do that okay the user can't do that you are having access to the switches you can go and change the mac address so port security in short is not allowing any unauthorized user to get access to the lan network first second second i told you about mac flood attack okay mac spoof attack mac flood attack can also be mitigated where a user is trying to send multiple unauthorized mac address choke the choke the mac table of the switch with those fake mac addresses and and uh, ask the switch to misbehave okay by sending those broadcasts so all those attacks can be mitigated with this simple tool or simple uh, uh, configuration of port security guys i hope you understood this okay so today what i'll do i will show you one practical of port security let's see okay so i have one setup here with me you can see the setup okay so now i'm showing you how to configure port security and how to mitigate this attack so in this uh, there are three devices with me 2 3 and 4 and 5 okay so i'll just first connect i'll wipe this and start this or first we'll stop this Okay, so at present I have not configured anything. How many ports are there with this guy? R one. It's not R one actually. It is a switch, multi-layer switch. So there are four ports I think. E zero by zero, E zero by one, E zero by two, E zero by three. Okay, so I'll say config T. interface range e0 by 0 to 4 or 3 then i will say switch port mode access always this feature is designed for access port so switch port mode access why access port or why because access layer you have users then i will say switch port port security when i do this just do this and when i say do show port security or i say show port security interface e0 by 0 you can see <coughs> we'll take this here so that we can keep it like this okay all of you can see the screen all of you can see i just increase the font also now you see stelling port security is on enabled and you see there is only one mac address allowed by default one mac address okay So when I say show run interface E zero by zero, I can see I have just done what switch port port security. 
and what is the violation shut down so the default violation is what shut down so now if i connect this still he has not learned any mac address so i'll just go here and say show port security again see he learned that mac address okay so now what i'll do i'll go here and say switch port port security mac address sticky you see he stick the mac address to that port which mac address r2's mac address so i just say okay so when i say show interface <coughs> he is telling i already stick this mac address maximum is 1 by default maximum violation is shut down port security is enabled now what i saved it and i stop this i stop this i delete this and connect one more router or one more device same port okay now i'll do what start I can use secure CRT also. Once again, show port security interface E zero by zero. Okay, show run interface E zero by zero. you can see now what i just go here and start this pc which is unauthorized pc because see i i never change the you can see guys error disable p secure violation port security violation has detected on port number e0 by 0 that means he immediately recognized that an unauthorized user has started access to this port e0 by 0 and because he noticed that this mac address is different than double a double b he immediately brought this port to what error disable state error disable and shut down shutdown is the violation mode can you see this was the mac address detected by him original mac address that we have given is 2000 he detected 3000 and just because of this just because of this you see the status is what that is that means it's triggering port sec security is triggering ha ah, suppose i change it to 3 but before that i have to bring this up for bringing this up i have to say shut and then say no shut to bring a port from error disable state i have to say shut and no shut correct so when i say shut no shut the port comes up but then again he will detect some error and then again he will go in the shutdown mode so now what i'll do i will I told you, no, because see the same MAC address is again received by the same port. 
so when you bring it up also after some time it is coming back again with the error yes you can do it you can change the mac address guys you can go to e0 by 0 okay you can go to e0 by 0 just take a copy of this state this line and you can change it but then he is telling already I have learned this <laughs> okay so see this is a violation no he, he already learned this address okay so first just bring it from bring it up removed it and then I add what show port security interface is 0 by 0 show run interface is 0 by now I will do what I will go here on E0 by 0 and say switch port port security maximum <coughs> maximum I will make it 3 ok so now when I made maximum is telling I took two MAC addresses on this interfaces the first one is 2000 and the second one is 3000 ok like this so he will he will not mind till three MAC address now suppose you want to go back to one MAC address which is default or you want to change the change the violation mode so the first violation mode is shut down which is default the second one is what restrict and the third one is what protect now what is the difference between restrict and protect the port immediately is put into error disable state and the port shut down in restrict what happened the port is allowed to stay up but all the packet from the violating mm. mac address are dropped now this is a very good mode because see if you know if someone is doing some mischief why your port should go down he should not be allowed so in the second option restrict I am allowing the port to remain up but I do not want the violating machine should send any frames or receive any frames and plus I want the intimation of this to be sent to the syslog server so restrict is the best option compared to shutdown because like I remember one day there was a problem with my uh, because I was not there at home so when I am not there at home and some short circuit happens ok nowadays you know for electricity and for saving your house from fire they have a tripper so some short circuit happened and the tripper immediately switch off all the lights and power in my house so it is a very good move you know I liked it ok something was saved but then I lost 3000 rupees you will ask me how my refrigerator was shut down and my refrigerator was shut down and because of that my cheese butter chicken everything got spoiled <laughs> because there was a immediate shutdown of the power so you know things are good at some time ok but anyway it is better than fire so shutdown completely is definitely a good way of saving it but then I do not want a complete shutdown I want only that particular port where the uh, you know the the violating MAC address has come I do not want this violating MAC address should send any frames I want all the packets from this violating MAC address to be dropped and for that reason I will go with the option restrict in protect also same option uh, same thing like restrict only prob only thing is like he will not be re reporting the uh, problem okay 
that's the only thing so shutdown is the definitely the default violation mode in shutdown everything shuts like the port will go into error disable state until unless you do shut no shut it will not come up or you or do auto recovery auto recovery also you can do huh? so i will say restrict here okay so in restrict what happened it won't shut down automatically clear guys maximum limit depends on the model of the switch <coughs> okay so here the maximum limit might be 1024 in some switches in some switches it is 4000 but it is still less than 14000 mac address or 15000 or 20000 depend on the model so you you saw the maximum limit it is 4097 adnan still it is less no if somebody try to spoof mac or if somebody try to do mac flood attack what will happen he will be able to send only 4000 mac addresses that's all and i'm my switch is having still a limit of 14000 that is 10000 more so he can't do that attack got it so always remember the maximum limit of MAC addresses will be always as per the model. Some model they might have 1024, some model they might have 4097, some model they might have more than that 8192 also possible. It all, all you have to do is put a question mark and find out. Clear? Guys, I hope you like the theory, I hope you like the practical. See. I, I told you for VLAN hop attack, for double tagging attack, for switch spoof attack, it is not possible. But yes, for port security, for private VLAN, for uh, DSCP spoofing and for uh, uh, STP attacks, yes, I can show you the practical also. Okay. So, we will do practical for DSCP spoofing tomorrow, we will do practical for uh, STP attacks like how uh, BPD filter works or how BPD guard works, how root guard works, everything. So, e everything related to layer 2, okay. Uh, these are the practicals we can do it and I am having already having this setup for that, okay. Any questions? Guys, any questions? You can ask me. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we will we'll do the practical for these topics tomorrow. Okay, take care. Bye. Thank you.